Coolio's 1995 song Gangsta's Paradise became a rap anthem, and although his star later dimmed, it never really went out during his lifetime. Here's some things you may not know about the late rap superstar. Artis Ivy has been known as Coolio for decades. The name began as something of an insult, but Ivy liked it and decided to use it. The origins of Coolio depend on whom you ask, but all the stories share the same general structure. In one version, Ivy got the name in high school when he was performing a Julio Iglesias song in a competition, and his friends nicknamed him Coolio Iglesias. In another version of the story, Ivy was listening to a song by Jose Feliciano, and his friends, mocking him, gave him the nickname Coolio Iglesias. Regardless of how he got there, Ivy chose not to take the insults to heart and instead ran with them, using the nickname as part of his rap persona. Even though young artist Ivy had some involvement with gangs and criminal activities as a teen, that wasn't the case at first after moving to Compton at eight years old with his mother and sister. At his new home, the artist, one day to be known as Coolio, spent most of his time engrossed in the world of children's fiction. In an interview with Rolling Stone, he said, I lived in that library, man. I read every kid's book they had in there. I even read Judy Bloom. Coolio was very close with his mother, so when not at the library, she taught him how to play just about every board and card game that existed. Playing games wasn't just fun for the two, they also devised a way to turn their impressive skills into a money-making operation. My mother embarrassed me so much as a child, dude, that mm. I was unembarrassable. Speaking with The Independent, Coolio revealed, When I was 10 years old, she'd invite people over to play dominoes and she was hustling them. She would let them win and then she'd say, You sorry mother You come in here and me and my 10-year-old son will whip your a**. She bet them $50 and I come in and we kicked a man. Coolio's most popular song, Gangsta's Paradise, has the word gangster right in there in the title, and Coolio did grow up on the rough streets of Compton, where poverty, hopelessness, despair, and gang violence were part of daily life. But was Coolio ever a gangster? Well, yes and no. When he was a preteen, artist Ivy started getting into trouble and wound up with the baby Crips, a sort of minor league version of the real thing. But he didn't fit in well with that crowd and was never formally inducted into the violent LA street gang. However, despite not being in a gang, Coolio did manage to run afoul of the law. As a teen, he was busted for bringing a weapon to school and cashing a stolen money order. And as an adult, Ivy wound up on the wrong side of the law more than once. In 1998, Coolio was busted as an accessory to robbery. And in 2016, he and his crew were busted for having a loaded firearm inside a bag at Los Angeles International Airport. When Coolio was in his 20s, he was at the lowest point of his life. The young man's dependency on crack cocaine wasn't just detrimental to his health, it infuriated his loved ones, particularly his brother Spoon. In an interview with Radar Online, Coolio explained the extremely tense time, saying, I was down to 100 pounds, I was a skeleton, and Spoon pointed a 38 caliber at my head and told me if I didn't promise to clean up, he would kill me. To overcome his addiction, the future rapper moved to San Jose to live with his father, where he became a volunteer firefighter and a program for drug addicts. The regimented structure was exactly what he needed. Even though Coolio stated that the 18 months he spent in a brigade of the California Department of Forestry was the most difficult job he ever had, it was a life-altering experience that saved him. Not only did he kick his harmful habit, but his Christian faith became stronger and helped him through the process of getting clean. For most musicians, being spoofed by Weird Al Yankovic is a badge of honor. For example, Houston rapper Chameleon Air, whose writing dirty became white and nerdy, told Wired that the spoof meant he'd made it and called it an honor. However, when Weird Al turned Gangsta's Paradise into Amish Paradise, Coolio wasn't feeling it. Yankovic always makes it a point to get the artist's permission before writing a parody, not because he's legally required to do so, but because he likes to maintain good relationships with his colleagues. In the case of Gangsta's Paradise, Yankovic got permission for the spoof from Coolio's record label, but apparently Coolio himself wasn't behind that authorization. In fact, he was quite salty about his serious look at real problems being turned into a comedy bit, and publicly called out Weird Al for spoofing him without permission. However, after a few decades, Coolio realized he was being a giant baby about it. According to Showbiz Cheat Sheet, Coolio said, I've since apologized to Weird Al. Again, that was so stupid. That was a stupid thing for me to do. That was one of the dumbest things I did in my career. By 2008, Coolio's star had dimmed quite a bit. Though far from broke, he wasn't the multimillionaire he'd been in his heyday, having lost quite a bit of money to divorce and drug addiction, so he turned to reality TV to bring in some cash. The show was to focus on Coolio's relationship with his children, who at the time ranged in age from preteen to early 20s. Despite having grown up poor and surrounded by gangs, Coolio tried to manage his own children a bit better. According to his daughter Brandy, who was 19 at the time, it usually didn't work. He's tried to ground me in Artisha by being like, you can't go out for the weekend, but he'd give us money and let us go anyway. He threatens us, but only with money. That's not to say that his children got off scot-free for their shenanigans. For example, when his daughters failed to clean the kitchen after dinner, Coolio punished them by dropping pots of spaghetti on their beds. 
Coolio's fame increased dramatically after the release of Gangsta's Paradise, and his new celebrity status brought experiences he never would have considered in his earlier life, most notably playing golf. Speaking to The Independent, Coolio admitted that he initially judged the sport harshly without knowing much about it. He said, I used to think it was a white man's sport. I used to say, f that f until I played it one time in a celebrity tournament, and I've been going once a week ever since. I just love it. It's so relaxing, man. The rapper discovered he had a knack for the sport even before he participated in the tournament. In order to get some familiarity with it beforehand, Coolio went to the driving range twice, and his performance was surprisingly much better than what he expected. You know, I was trying to represent for my neighborhood. Dude, I don't want to be out here looking like no, looking like no bum, you know what I'm saying? From then on, his passion for golf only grew, but he remained humble about his abilities and acknowledged he would probably never reach pro level. In the 90s, Coolio's music paved the way for him to branch out from standard gangster rap. Two young comedians, Keenan Thompson and Kel Mitchell, were particularly grateful for the musicians' contribution to their new show, Keenan and Kel. Coolio not only wrote the theme song for the kids' comedy, but appeared in the video as well. Mitchell was so pleased with the results that he even used the song before his stand-up act. Yeah, let me get a good burger, extra pickles, Whoa. and... Coolio! You're Coolio! You know that? Thompson expressed his gratitude to the rapper via Entertainment Weekly, saying, Shout out to Coolio. It was the best. He had been on all that before at that point, so we felt like we knew him. That's how you are when you're young. Oh yeah, Coolio's my best friend. Me, I went to your concert. Oh, there was lots of people, man. You know what I'm no, I was in row X, seat 37. After touring with the rap group Insane Clown Posse, Coolio gained a lot of respect not just for the duo, but also for their infamous fans known as Juggalos. Coolio got a tattoo to honor them, but he faced criticism when he showed it off to the world because he spelled Juggalos with only one G, a fact pointed out by TMZ. Coolio was given the opportunity to set the record straight in an interview with Vice. When asked if it truly was a mistake, he replied, I took the G out of Juggalo because there's only one mother G, and that's me. I didn't need two Gs to describe my Juggalo. The rapper then called out TMZ for the story and accused them of trying to make a fool out of him. He also dished out his own criticism, stating that it was not right for the outlet to place judgment on people or cultures they don't understand. Growing up in poverty in a rough neighborhood in LA, Artis Ivy didn't have access to quality food, a situation that would now be referred to as a food desert. Nevertheless, Ivy did the best he could with what he was given, and by the age of 10, he was creating meals in his family's kitchen. By 2018, with his rap career in the rearview mirror, Coolio reinvented himself as a chef. If it looked good, it smelled good, and it tastes good, then what is it? It feels good. Specifically, he made a second career out of teaching his readers and viewers how to do what he did as a young boy, make delicious and healthy meals with inexpensive ingredients. His book, Cooking with Coolio, Five Star Meals at a One Star Price, contains chapters with titles like How to Become a Kitchen Pimp and Pasta Like a Rasta. Plus, his recipes include fusions that you'll not likely find in a Michelin-starred restaurant, such as Blasian, Black Asian, or Gitalian, Ghetto Italian. That's right! I said soul rolls, not egg rolls! Yeah! In addition to his book, Coolio took his culinary career to the small screen, appearing on the Food Network, as well as in a web series, Cooking with Coolio. Out of all of Coolio's side projects, perhaps the funniest were his cameo appearances on the animated series Futurama as the character Quanzabot. Beginning in 2001, he appeared in the Season 4 episode A Tale of Two Santas, and then in Season 7's A Futurama Holiday Spectacular. Hanukkah zombies having a luau at the Bonet Brith. You coming? When Quanzabot appeared in the Futurama film Bender's Big Score, it could have been for the last time as the show was canceled in 2013. However, the rapper was able to reprise his role one last time in the revival of the show on Hulu, with 20 new episodes available for streaming in 2023. Shortly after he finished recording for the role, Coolio tragically passed away from an accidental overdose of fentanyl. Executive producer David Cohen told TMZ, Coolio was one of my favorite guests. He was always totally upbeat and genuinely enjoyed coming in to record as his character Quanzabot. During his impressive career, Coolio gained more fame and fortune than most, but he didn't succeed without facing personal struggles. One of his greatest obstacles was the severe asthma he was plagued with his entire life. When talking with USA Today, the rapper explained the severity of his condition, saying, I had a few episodes with asthma where I was in serious trouble and could have died. I still played sports, but I would just have attacks and have to be hospitalized every now and then. Coolio did whatever he could to help others who suffered from the condition, working to increase awareness of treatments for children in particular. One major way he was able to offer support was by becoming a spokesman for the Asthma and Allergies Foundation. 
Not only did the rapper have attacks that were so bad he passed out, but his asthma flared up at the worst moments during performances. Most depressing of all is the claim by TMZ that sources close to Coolio said that, along with the drugs in his system, asthma may have contributed to his untimely death. If you or anyone you know needs help with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.